Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome back, my friends, again to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we open the scriptures, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit. But you said, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more should your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them and ask him? And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Amen. We ask for the power to rightly divide the word of truth. Mm. Though it may not be popular among men, though it may not be accepted by traditions, mm. but Lord, it's your word, and the heavens and earth shall pass away, but your word shall stand forever. Mm. May it stand in our hearts and give us understanding of the scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. I want to give praise to our Lord today because I know that uh, in previous program we have been describing the work of the mighty priest, our priest, Jesus Christ, that in Revelation 12 has been described as being sitting in the throne. And uh, also we discuss in Revelation 1 describing more about that throne. Mm -hmm. By him sitting down in the throne of heaven, God, he has made us also. He can make of each one of us. And that's what I want, maybe in this program today, to expand. Which are the conditions or which is, uh, how can we, and our viewers are there too worldwide, how can they become part of those kings and priests? Because I remember when I used to attend, you know, a Roman Catholic seminary, they used to, you know, read verses like this to uh, justify an earthly priesthood. But going through the Bible, if we go with an open mind through the Bible, we see that this priest, this priest that the Bible is describing over here, it's not just an earthly priest. No, in fact, the Bible also shows us very clearly that... And, and, and there are conditions. It, it, the Bible establishes, first of all, from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the prophecy concerning Christ as our high priest, mm -hmm. or, or having being a priest on his throne. Go to Zechariah 6.13. Okay, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Look what the Bible says again. In Zechariah 6.13. Talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. the uh -huh. branch, right. even he shall build the temple of the Lord, mm -hmm. and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. He should be what? Uh, see, he will sit and rule, but he should be what? A priest, priest. upon his throne. He's now, a Melchizedek priest. Yes, and, at, and notice very carefully, it's very important to bring out too that he's after the order of Melchizedek who has no beginning and has no end. Okay. And that's what it's talking about, the idea that Christ has no beginning, he has no end, because he is not only priest, but he's also creator. Okay. And savior. Mm -hmm. uh, and God, all right? Just keep that, keep all that in mind, all right? Uh -huh. Then the Bible says over in, um, what type of, what type of, what are the priests supposed to speak? Because, okay. you know, a lot of times people want to say they're priests, but we got priests into people who claim to have been priests on earth, especially earthly priesthood. Right. We got all type of pedophilia going on. We got all type of things. What does the Bible say a priest is supposed to speak? Yeah. In the truth, in the real sense of truth. And maybe we should already say, yes, all of us have been called to be priests. Yes, go to Malachi okay. 3. But, but, but again, that condition. That's exactly what Malachi will tell oh, us. Okay, okay, go, go ahead. Okay, Malachi go ahead. 2. You're 7. just going a little bit. I'd like to read 5 through 7. Yeah, 5 through 7. Uh, yes, that's good, that's good. Like My that. covenant was with him of life and peace, talking okay. about the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me, talking about those who accept the first angel's message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. That's no guile found sorry, in their what mouth. What was that verse again? Malachi, Malachi 2, two verse two, six five, now. Okay, six, six, okay. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He okay. walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. That means he turned many to righteousness. All right. And the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the, the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Wow. That's right. Now for, if I ask you, for how many people was this plan set up to, God set up this plan for how many people? That's God's it, it goal. It was ju ju just for a special that's people? That's God's goal for everyone. It meant to every believer. In fact, go to, go to 1 Peter 2.9. Oh, okay. Bef before we do, I just wanted yes. to notice the connection between that description of the tribe of Levi in chapter 2 okay. with the, the uh, description of the 144,000 who are people in Revelation 1 through 5, but we'll just read uh, verse 5, it says, And in their mouth was found no guile. That's the same as what we read about the, the description priest. Of the priest. Uh -huh. And in Daniel 12, verse 3, it says that the people that are living on this earth at the very end of time will turn many away, or they will turn many to, to righteousness. righteousness. Right. Amen. And they're the 144,000 as well. Well, you talk about the last remnant that God is going to have on this earth. And so we see that the 144,000, God's last day people, who are ready for His second coming, are priests. And just, just described to be, just as priests. Clear, we know there's more than 144,000 people on yeah. planet Earth at the time of Christ's return. Uh, yeah. We're talking about 144,000 that the Bible will say will be considered righteous people. Because Jesus talks about a lot of Christians and a lot of groups, no matter what one you might profess to be, it's not based on your denomination, it's based on two things, mm -hmm. character and keeping of the commandments. Yeah, me, me. Look, at, look at Malachi 7, mm -hmm. I, mean, so, I mean Matthew 7, 21, just, 23. Real quick. Just one other point mm -hmm. I'd like to bring up. The covenant was made with Levi because they were faithful during a great apostasy at the golden calf apostasy. Yeah. That shows that God's last day people, 144,000, who are living when Christ comes, uh, they're going through a great apostasy as well, but they're going to be faithful like the tribe of Levi was. Yes, I promise to you, mm -hmm. I promise to all of you out there, we're, we're going to expand. When we get to Revelation 7, Revelation 14, about this 144,000, mm -hmm. we, we will expand Right, to because that. I want to make sure that everybody understands that they're not the only ones on planet Earth alive at the coming of Christ. Right. But they are considered righteous in the sight of God. They have the seal of living God. But all of us can have the seal if we're willing to love God and keep His commandments. Amen. But the seal is also based on keeping the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath. Amen. Seven not day Sabbath. Seven day Sabbath, all right? right? Not the first day week Sabbath, mm -hmm. or not any other Sabbath, but mm -hmm. the seventh day Sabbath, from sunset Friday, sunset Saturday. Now let's go. Let's go back here. You you, you will mention Matthew seven. Matthew you want uh, Matthew seven for a moment. Okay. And I want to just show very clearly what's uh -huh. going to happen. I, very, Matthew seven, right? Quick, twenty-two to twenty-three. The Bible says this, and then it says here, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in the name? Verse twenty-two. Mm -hmm. And it says, in that name cast out devils, and I name the many wonderful works. Then will I profess in them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worked what? Iniquity. 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 Many of the Christians today who don't believe they can overcome through Christ's righteousness are going to find themselves being rejected by Christ, not because God didn't love them, but they didn't love God enough to develop his character and to keep his commandments. Or not because they were not uh, quote-unquote Christians. This is a group of, Jesus is describing over here, uh, many people, groups of people, uh, who profess, that, 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 that who they, they to thought, believe that they, thought that they were calling Jesus Lord. Yeah, they, it's not talking about to the to, to, to the not worldly. The, it's not the atheists or nobody no, like that. No, this no. is talking about people, oh, believers. This is talking about believers who right. profess Christ, right. but at the same time have rejected mm. his character mm. and also have rejected his law. Okay, let, let, let's go, let's continue then describing that type of, because I want to be part of the priest. I mean, you, you have heard my testimony. Mm -hmm. I was dedicated to the priesthood since I was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, they, my mom and my father, in their ignorance, you know, they thought to it was an earthly priesthood. Wow. But, but by God's grace, mm -hmm. I became, and you can become, 
a priest to the Most High. Because this is the, for the Most this, High. This is the priest Jesus Christ. This is the Bible teaches a priest to the believers. In right. First Peter chapter two okay. verse nine, uh, let's go. it said, "But ye are a chosen generation, uh -huh. a royal priesthood, uh -huh. a holy nation, Amen. a peculiar people, Amen. that ye should show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into marvelous light." Amen. And notice what else it says: "In which times past were not a people, but are now the people of God." The who? The people of God. Which had obtained mercy, which had not, but had, not had mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but let's go back to verse nine. Yeah. In English language, I believe, like in Spanish, that word peculiar, it, 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 it gives a meaning of what? Professor John, my brother Patrick. <laughs> peculiar means a little bit uh, not like everything else. No, it's distinguish themselves from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so if we want to be part of the priesthood, you know, that Jesus is describing, he's talking about, mm -hmm. in which he, sit, he sat down in the throne of his father, then we must, by his grace, in his grace alone, we must become a, a holy nation, huh? a peculiar. Nowadays, most people don't want to be peculiar. We are living in a time, and I've been told this so many times by colleagues, by friend of mine. You know why? Why don't you preach? Even radio stations, even you know, <laughs> in the media. He said, "Why? Why are you trying to bring this message that nobody's preaching? Why you want to be so unique?" Well, first, I don't want to. I would like to preach a message that will be so popular that everybody will be exci exciting. But guess what? God's true message for every generation has been so unique, so special, that in every generation throughout the history, you will see that only a few people have been taking hold of that special truth. Today, we talk about the seventh-day Sabbath. Most people, they have been caught up in what? Into the Sunday, the day of the sun, worshiping. But most people don't, don't, don't stop to realize that because it, everybody wants to be popular. Everybody wants to be in the majority. Okay. Yes. I'd like to also go back to verse 5, which links it back to Zechariah that we read about Jesus building the temple. Mm -hmm. It's talking about Jesus, uh -huh. to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, mm -hmm. but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to, upper, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is building up this spiritual temple made up of living stones. If we are connected to him, the cornerstone, we become living stones. This is a spiritual temple and we, it says here that ye also are become a spiritual house and a holy priesthood. So yes. the priesthood of all believers being built up into a spiritual temple and Jesus is the cornerstone. He's also, Zechariah also says, he's going to put on the capstone. Hold it so. right there because many people are interpreting or hoping that there will be a literal temple up in Jerusalem. But we will be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back, my friends. Brother Patrick, I cut you off before the break. Go ahead. Well, just to repeat a little bit, verse 5 says that ye also as lively stones, this is 1 Peter 2, verse 5, uh -huh. ye also as lively stones 
are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 talks, he says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. This is the great Protestant principle of the priesthood of all believers. Amen. And that God wants us all to be priests associated with Jesus Christ, our great high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. And we're thankful for the Word of God, the Bible, that proclaims this doctrine so and clearly. I, I, and I believe that uh, this is one of the greatest privilege that we can all have to know from the Bible that yes, by the work of Jesus Christ, we can all become partaker of his priesthood. In that sense, the spiritual. And, and, and by the way, I'm sure that you know, both of you know that uh, this was God's plan, by the way, for Israel. Uh, according to in Exodus chapter 19, mm -hmm. right? Look what it says in there. Let, let's start on verse 4. Because the, the, the best way for us to understand today God's requirement is to go back, you know, in the Old Testament. So, because the Old Testament was like a figure, you know, a samples, yes. a figure of things to come. Verse 4. You have uh, seen what I have, yeah. you have seen oh. what I did unto the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and how I bear you, bear you mm -hmm. on eagle's wings, and brought you into my, unto myself. Okay, so, uh, step by step, uh, the Egypt it's a symbol of what? Today. Sin. Sin. Sin and what the else? World. The, the, the world. The bondage right? of sin. Okay. So God has been bringing us, calling all of us, all of us, even you out there who are watching this program, you know, around the world. God is calling each one of us. And let's pay attention. What is God's plan for each, not only for just a special group of people, but for all of us. Uh, now, therefore, if ye yeah. will obey my voice okay. indeed, and keep my covenant, okay. then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me okay. above all people, for okay. all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me as a kingdom of priests okay. and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, so which was the conditions that God was setting up uh, to his people at that time, to Israel, that called out of Egypt. Hmm. They were like, going to become a kingdom of priests unto God. If, well, if, they, if, if they kept his covenant. Obey my voice. Obeyed his voice and kept his covenant. Indeed. And keep my covenant. And then, then the next chapter, is, he is, God gives the covenant, which is the Ten Commandments. And, amen. Showing the ten, ten Commandments is directly connected to the priesthood so, of believers. So the, and where is the law? In everyone's heart. Right. Written there by the Holy Ghost under the New Covenant. Under the New Amen. Covenant. So, so there's nothing new. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yes, Brother Patrick. So, if we are a priesthood of all believers. As the Reformation. Yeah. At the believed, same time, there's only one mediator in heaven. How are we cooperating with Christ as priests here on this earth? Do we have people confess their sins to us? Of course not. No. Because Jesus is only our only high priest. Isn't that what we've been studying? That's right. In several programs, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, chapter 8, chapter 9, the whole book of Hebrews. In Hebrews 7, right? 24. So, so what do we do as priests then? Oh, we have to pray for the people. We have to, we have to reach out. See, the function, the main function for the priest was to bring the congregation to God. Hmm. The main function of the prophet was to bring messages from God to the people. You see the, the, those two? Okay. Jesus was the priest and the prophet and the king. Right? And he's going to come as, to judge, hmm. as a judge. But us, we must bring the people and write, you know, according to this uh, word that we are reading over here, we become by by the blood of the lamb by bringing the people to god to jesus hmm. not to me not to to a religion not to a denomination because 
The counterfeit priesthood is bring people to man. No, we bring people to God, to Jesus. Do you see the difference? Very good. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to bring out was that a counterfeit priesthood and a counterfeit sanctuary system was set up according to the prophecy of the book of Daniel. Uh -huh. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 13, mm -hmm. the Bible foretells a situation that would take place that would develop into what we see today in our, in our society and, in among, and among religions. Listen mm -hmm. carefully. Daniel 8, 13, the Bible says here, it says, then I heard one saint speaking to another saint. All right. Mm -hmm. And another saint said to that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily mm -hmm. and the sanctuary? The word sacrifice is added and does not belong to the text. And, it's, and it's, it says, and the transgression of desolation mm -hmm. to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible for, asks us how the angel says the saint the question is asked, how long mm. shall the sanctuary and the host be trodden underfoot? Mm. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mm. Now, what's interesting to write this is that, remember, in the Old Testament, they had a sanctuary service. Y'all mm -hmm. just got through talking about it. And this sanctuary service was a sanctuary for God. And later, that sanctuary for God was built called Solomon's, they, they, later they tried to call it Solomon's temple, but it was actually, Solomon never had a temple. He was building a temple for God, all right? So this sanctuary was the earthly sanctuary that was built for God, that he might have a house of his own. And David, but you know, we know that God, bigger than our houses, but God would honor the sanctuary as long as they, Israel followed exactly what God required. But when Israel broke, from, broke, went into idolatry and began to pollute the sanctuary with idolatry, God took his name out of that sanctuary. And therefore, later on today, we call it Solomon's temple. When in reality, Solomon never had a temple, it was God's sanctuary. But now, the reason why I said that is so people can identify. But going back here carefully, the Bible said, the Bible foretold that the sanctuary, the, the heavenly sanctuary, would be replaced by an earthly priesthood. Mm -hmm. Now notice, but it's not the earthly priesthood of believers. It's a priesthood that will become exclusive in its teaching that as they ordain priests, that these priests have the same prerogatives of Christ himself. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible means. They, in other words, they have sought to replace Christ, not point people to Christ, but to replace Christ. Right. The, 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 the spiritual priest will bring people to Christ. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Not to them. Okay? Now, you mentioned before, and, Brother and, Patrick. And point people to Christ in the heavenly uh, sanctuary. Right. Amen. And right now in the most holy now, place. Now, you mentioned that Jesus is building up this spiritual temple, yes. which are the believer. Living stones. Living stones. Peter called it like that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Peter, the quote-unquote first pope, which we know was not the first pope, according to the Bible, according to history. But anyway, that, that know, can Peter be another says, topic. Christ <laughs> was the foundation, the rock on which this spiritual temple is being built. By the way, do, do you know we put this together? Um, we have, we, I forgot to be offering literature. And uh, so let me mention this. Was Peter the first pope? This little booklet will explain to you in a very simple way that even a child can understand it, that Peter could not be the first pope, uh, according to the Bible, according to history. And uh, so it's, it, that, that's one booklet that I want to mention. Also, for those of you who want to go to our website, eternalgospel.com, you can read, you can download literature like uh, the Antichrist Revealed. We, we got a book on here. We, we haven't been offering lately in our programs, but uh, we, we want you to know that we have plenty of literature that we are sending by thousands free of charge to the people. Okay? Um, the Antichrist identify. There's another one called, let me see, the, the, you were able to get it, hopefully, in the camera. Um, what happens after death? There's a lot of issues, a lot of confusion over there that um, Satan has been introducing into Christianity. 
uh, there's another study right in this booklet called the, the Secret Rapture. It's right there. So again, you can go eternalgospel.com. You can watch the previous program. You can hear our national radio programs also by clicking radio program in there at your spare time. And uh, what else I have in here? Here we have the, okay. we have the uh, 95 Thesis newsletter regarding the true day of worship, mm -hmm. the seventh day Sabbath. Here you're gonna see, as we can see from the camera here, we can see very clearly that this is going to talk about the importance of the Sabbath and that the Sabbath cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. And also who, by whose authority, no one has authority, no king, no priest, no political politician or ministry or church can, has the right to change God's law. Amen. So it's going to talk about that and it's going to talk about the importance of the seal of God in his commandments right here. Amen. Thank you. 95 Thank you. points. By the way, as you know, we have been offering over 20 years a thousand dollars for anyone to bring to us just one Bible verse. Just, just, just one from the, from the old King James Bible, you know, stating that the sanctity of Saturday had been transferred by Jesus or his apostle, his disciple, you know, to Sunday. A thousand dollars. Do you know nobody has come and claimed the thousand dollars? But I want to say that some people think that when we talk about this, this is nonsense or this is crazy. But if we're going to study the Bible correctly, then we must be, believe in what the Bible says is truth. Yes. Okay. And truth, the Bible says in Psalms 119, 151, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. So therefore, the seventh day Sabbath is truth. Not, the, not, not any Sabbath. Every day is holy. That is true, but every day is not, every day is good, I'm sorry, but every day is not holy. Uh -huh. That's the truth. Yes. Okay. And God okay. made only one day, one day holy, holy. That's right. blessed and sanctified, which can only be the Sabbath day. And no other day, all the other days are work days, according to the But we command. should try to live holy every day. <laughs> okay, amen. In the eyes amen. of God. Can but I close the program? I need to close by reminding yes. you, yes, God is calling each one of us, you including our viewers, to be part of this special priesthood that he's preparing so we can all live together with him forever and ever. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.